Okay, so this diagram here shows a man pushing a box up a slope. He's applying a force of 30 newtons and is moving a distance of 10 meters. So here's a graph of force and distance. As you can see, the force is a constant across the whole distance. So to figure out the work done, you just use the equation force times distance. So 30 newtons times 10 meters gives us 300 joules of work done. Okay, what about if the force is changing? For example, this block here that you're pulling is attached to a spring. So at the beginning, it's very easy to pull the spring, but as you pull, pull it further and further, it gets harder and the force required increases. Here's a force distance graph. So you can see at the start, the force is small and as with the distance, it's increasing. So here you can't just simply multiply 40 by 10 because it was at the beginning, it would have taken less work to stretch it. So we have to use the correct version of the work done formula. So I've been ignoring the delta so far. So using this equation, what, how, what, how we can interpret this is that if we take the force at a particular point, let's say here, F, and you multiply it by the change in distance of that, over a small distance there, what you're doing is you're working out this area, and that is giving you the work done in that section. So it turns out the whole area under this graph can be used to work out the work done. Okay, so in this case, the area is it's a triangle, so I can do 40 times 10. Okay, but because it's a triangle, I divide it by 2. So that gives us 200 joules of work done to stretch it from the start to the end. The graph shows how the force on a 1.5 kilogram ball changes with distance. The ball is initially at rest. Calculate the velocity of the ball when it reaches 6.0 meters, so all the way down to the end here. The force acts horizontally. Okay, that means we can ignore any gravitational potential energy in our equations because the for the gravitational potential energy to change, the box needs to be either moving up or down, uh, in other words, vertically, and it's not. Uh, and the force is parallel to the direction the box is moving in, so that means we can use work done because the definition of work is force times parallel distance, and the resistive forces are negligible. Okay, so you can see the force here is changing, so what we're going to do is we can work out the work done over this whole 6 meters by chopping this into a triangle, a square there, and another triangle over here. So this one will be 2 times 1 divided by 2, so that's just 1 joule there. This one here is it's a, a square, so it's just 2 times 2 there, so that's 4 joules. And the final one here is going to be, let's see, we've got uh, 2 times 3 over 2, so that's 3 joules. So in total, 1 plus 4 plus 3, that gives us 8 joule in total. Okay, so it's not moving up or down, because we know it's, so there's no change in gravitational pressure energy. And there's no resistive forces, so all of this energy is going to turn into kinetic energy. So I can make that equal to half m v squared. And m we know is 1.5. So to rearrange this equation, I get 8 joules times 2 divided by the mass, 1.5, and then square root that to get the velocity, and we should get 3.3 meters per second. Okay, so in this question, we have a force distance graph again but this time it's curved, so it's going to be a bit trickier. So we're asked to calculate the work done up to the first 50 centimeters, up to here. So it is in centimeters, that means we're going to have to divide by 100, but I'm going to do that at the end. It'll just be easier then. Okay, so one thing I could do here to calculate the area under the graph, which is going to be the work done, is count squares up to this point here. Okay, so each square is going to be worth, two, let's see, 2 newtons, by uh, 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 cent, uh, meters. And so that means each square is going to be worth um, 0 0.2 joules. But another way I can do it is chop this up into triangles and trapeziums, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so to work out the area of this trapezium, I'm going to have to measure the y values as well, like this. So let's start off with this triangle of the first one here. So I'm going to do 5 times 10 there divided by 2. Okay, so that's 25, and then just do this for the next one. So again, I'm using the value A plus B. So this is going to be A here. It's going to be B times a height, which in this case is uh, 10 centimeters. 
and then divide that by 2 to so 75 and repeat this all the way up to 50 and then add them all together so if I add them all together I get 535 however remember this is in centimeters so I need to divide that by 100 to get 5.35 joules